You are about to witness history in the making. This is what the internet does to people. A few months ago, when I previewed Goner, a recent roguelite with a surreal look and world to it, I made a call that there weren't enough weird games out in the market. Oh, there's a ton of freeware games that are batch bonkers, but I'm still pining for games that went for the super bizarre and experimental to the extreme to give a fresh perspective on this medium. Little did I realize that the weirdness that gaming has been building up after not having a release for it has decided to go into this one little collection. Also a minor warning, some of the footage here does contain some flashing images, so if you are sensitive to that kind of thing, I'd recommend not watching this video. Oh look, horse porn. <laughs> Enter Tetrageddon Games, a love letter to the internet of old, a surreal deconstruction of gaming tropes, a sometimes mad and twisted reflection on modern pop culture, and the biggest what the f em ups of Indiecade. It's a collection of mini games all done by Alien Melon, real name Natalie Lawhead, that's inspired by internet culture. There were a lot of other hands that went into the collection too, but saying who did what, the game isn't telling. The main inspiration for the collection is Web 1.0, where artists created sites to be experimental and strive to create something that's completely different than anyone else. This was before corporations came to value usability over everything else, and then it was all made to be marketable and the same. It's also worth noting that in researching for this episode, the Web 1.0 sites that Tetrageddon takes influence from were almost completely gone from the internet. I've reached out to Natalie herself, and in speaking about experimental or alternate websites, none of them exist anymore. All that's left is a Tumblr account that archives the sites for the time in just pictures. Imagine that for a moment. An entire artistic movement completely vanishing, and if not for this game, I never would have known about it. Now some of the games from the 90s that Tetrageddon takes influence from, like cheesy software's work, can still run on DOSBox on a modern system. That and it's very easy to see the influences cheesy software had on Tetrageddon. In retrospect, Tetrageddon is the perfect name for this collection as Armageddon has already happened to this movement. That and there are lots of fish. I'm not a salmon, I'm a special fish. In perhaps a small way, the collection is a warning that making all games into a template that can generate buzzwords of games that we've all seen before, and where you can just put all these buzzwords into a machine, could happen to the indie scene. A bunch of samey genres we've seen a million times. On the equally bonkers website, she describes the collection as what the internet does to people, and that sums it up perfectly here. Part of the goal of the collection was to create something that Lawhead wanted to see more of on the web. The weirdness in these games are partially about celebrating the weirdness that exclusively came from internet culture. Lawhead goes into great detail about the creation of the game in a sort of talk that you can find on our YouTube channel, the link is in the description below. I would consistently convey that it's not a game and the point was to read poetry and look at art and think, which just caused more confusion. It's also an impressive effort in the sense that every game has a different art style to it. Some of them have more fluid hand-drawn characters and actions to them, while others have more of a pixel art style that fits with the theme that the game is going for. Some of the games have procedural generation, like Anatomically Incorrect Dinosaurs, where you're constructing your prehistoric lizard to make history. Help! Stop this madness! Another game, Froggy, has you collecting butterflies on a nonsensical apocalyptic highway of exploding cars. Considering that Lawhead lives within Irvine, California, I'm guessing the 405 might have been a key inspiration here. Offender 2 is a mostly hand-drawn game revolving around lifting an army of bunnies for a high score. There are also a wide range of extra hidden games within the games to be found, and they're equally as ridiculous and random. Admittedly, most of the games here are fairly short, where you'll spend a few minutes with each of them, and that's by design. Lawhead has even said in her talk that one of the jokes in the game is that you're playing it. It's an exercise in style to the extreme here, and the high-pitched bunnies or the dinosaurs' quips or just the rest of the nonsensical characters in the game really made me smile. While you may not spend hours on end with all the games here, I'll say that it's worth a trip to experience Alien Mound's unleashed imagination to experience things that words simply fail to describe. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that trip down a very, very strange series of games. 
A big thanks to Natalie Lawhead for answering my questions and for allowing me to use footage from her talk. The next couple videos you'll see on this channel are all about E3, so I'm about to dive into that madness. If you want to hear about those, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.